we go back again with another video and today hopefully in the meeting the EFL are going to announce the start dates for the new season this year. 2021 season, hopefully the opening day will be announced today at some point if they can decide on that quickly. Well, it was almost two years ago, two seasons ago, when Sunderland played against Wolverhampton Wanderers, the champions of the championship, who were probably on the beach at the time. But we won, very comfortable, and John O'Shea, the captain at the time, took his armband off and gave it to Barley Mumba, who came on, the 16-year-old, who came on for his first appearance for Sunderland Association Football Club, and we all thought he had a massive future at the club. Stuart Donald, Charlie Metfin were in the crowd at the time, but definitely Stuart Donald was, it was a new regime, the new owner came in, everybody's hopes were up, everybody was excited. We all wished Stuart Donald the best, even though not all of us were convinced with him. But the majority of Sunderland fans wanted Stuart Donald, you know, to wish him all the best that day, because we all knew how bad times it was with Ellis Short. And Stuart Donald came in, the new, the new hope of Sunderland Football Club, everyone was excited. I mean, some of us had reservations, whether he had the money, whether he was a chancer, which is what he hates being called. But the majority of the fans were really excited. It was a great day. It was a fantastic match, a brilliant result, and everybody really loved that last game at the stadium light in the championship. But like I said, Barley Mumba came on, and we all thought he's going to be one for the future. But unfortunately, this season, I think he's only played once as right back in a cup match. Strange how things go, but we've sold him. We are on the verge of selling him to Norwich City for half a million pounds. And at the way, at this moment in time, the things are going with Stuart Donald. Not one single Sunderland fan is actually behind Stuart Donald. Now, how the worm has turned everybody behind him, and now everybody seems to be against him of some really funny decisions he's been making over the last season or two. Now, he's decided to let Barley Mumba go to Norwich. Now, Norwich are on the brink of being relegated from the Premier League, but they still possibly could survive. So why would they want to buy Barley Mumba? What do they see that some of the managers can't see to put him in the squad? What's happened to our youth? We sold Joe Hugill, 200,000 I think it was, to Manchester United. Great up and coming young lad, striker, six foot tall, 16 year old, could be anything. But did Stuart Donald want to keep hold of them? No, he saw 200,000 pounds in his back pocket. Then we got 500,000 for Barley Mumba. Exciting times for Stuart Donald. Half a million. He skimmed his broke. But we all saw on Sunday Till I Die that lovely, big, wealthy house he lives in. Somewhere in Oxfordshire. Absolutely massive ground. You can get a football station, stadium in his grounds. But at the end of the day, that's his own personal wealth. And we all wanted Stuart Donald to succeed in the Sunderland Association Football Club. At this moment in time, a lot of Sunderland fans are on the breadline with the coronavirus. They can't afford season cards, match tickets, and so on and so forth. But Stuart Donald's sitting pretty. Now, we all wanted him to take the club forward. We didn't mind him making a quick book. We didn't mind him making 10 million here and there. So long as he got us in the championship, got some decent owners in, and took us as far as we could possibly go. But it's all gone pear-shaped under Stuart Donald. Everything's gone pear-shaped. The first season, no promotion. You know, we had... We had free transfers. The team flopped. We didn't make it into the, you know, the final of the, the playoff final. We lost against Charlton. And then Stuart Donald sacked Jack Ross. Now, a good friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, said he heard Ada McGeady talking in a little convenience store, allegedly. And he did say when Jack Ross was sacked, Stuart Donald wanted him out of the club. Now, I'm only, I'm only thinking this could be for money reasons for his high wages. So, in a hypothetical world, when the new, owner, the, new, the new manager came in, Phil Parkinson, did Stuart Donald sit down with Phil Parkinson and say, right, what are we going to do to get Ada McGeady off the books, to get him out of the club? I can't afford his wages. How are we going to go about this? So did they come up with some sort of plan? Because the new Ada McGeady was there. Uh, a fiery character. He's a fiery character. He can, he can, you know, I've heard he can go on the hover times, but then we all can. But did they come up with some sort of plan to get his back up? 
to get him on the verge to push him so he eventually go. Now, if that is the case, like I said before, it's only allegedly, and it's hypothetical, hypothetically, hypothetically, is that even a word? Hypothetical. If that happened, then me personally, I owe Adam McGee the apology because I thought he was a rotten apple. Possibly he was forced out the door. Now, the way things are going with Stuart Donald, I could possibly see that actually happening because he wants to save money. So Lafferty is now gone. And I, I've heard that, you know, Will Grigg is up for hire, but no one's defence will be terrified. Thanks, Tavi Mackham. But Will Grigg is now, hopefully, for Stuart Donald, is going to be sold. Now, he's been a flop at Sunderland. We all know he's been a flop at Sunderland, but he hasn't had his circumstances in the matches that he wants. So Stuart Donald is getting rid of everybody. Down to the bare bones. The club is being pushed down to the bare bones. He's trying to get every single last drop of penny money into the club, into him, for him, because he's absolutely broke at the club. Now, what's he going to do? Now, we all, I mean, I was one of the last people to be actually defending Stuart Donald. And I kind of feel a bit like, a bit silly now. But I, I am, I, I'm a trusting person. And I'm a loyal person. And I want to see the best in everybody. And you want people to succeed. So, I kind of wanted Stuart Donald to succeed, even though it looked as if, I mean, I was never going to, I was never going to fall him off a cliff. But, I give him as much opportunity, as much chance as he had, as possible, to succeed. But what's he going to do now? What's he going to do? Is he going to find a new buyer to come in? It's, it's still not, it's still not too late for Stuart Donald to turn this around. You, Stuart Donald, can turn this around. You can win the fans back somehow, possibly. Marcus Madison, on a free, June the 30th, up for grabs. Use the money that you're going to get from Mumbai, from Joe Hugill, and go and get Marcus Madison into the club. Give, give Phil Pattinson some animation. Animation? Give Phil Pattinson some animation. It's time for a little drink. Give Phil Pattinson some ammunition to go and do battle next season and hopefully get Sunderland promoted. Because we're going to be losing all these players, we need other good players in. Our Academy of Light is being stripped to the bare bones. It's probably the best academy in a lot of clubs in the Championship. All in all, totally the best academy of, for the youth in League One and probably the best in the Championship. And yet we have one of the worst squads. Now that isn't... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to say the players that are there are no good because I don't know what kind of quality of players are there. I just know from the results of this season, it hasn't been very good. And this is down to Stuart Donald, not investing in the youth. Now, I do wish every single young player who comes through that academy actually makes it as a professional football. You want to see the young ones come through and do absolutely fantastic and make it big time. And I'll... Every single person at that club now in the Academy of Light, I wish you all the best and I hope you do prove everybody wrong. Come through and, and be absolute stars. You know, we all wish you the best. We all have your backing. But this moment in time, it doesn't look good. We're not, we didn't do well on the table. We lost a load of games. We have lost some of our best assets. And, and Stuart Donald is going to get rid of the best assets because he needs the money. And like I said before, it's never too late to, to turn things around to grab victory of the, jaw, the jaws of defeat. You can do it, Stuart Donald. You can do it. You can get up, come up with a new game plan. If you're going to stay at Sunderland, don't drag us down into League 2. Don't have us as a mediocre League 1 club. Because at this moment in time, I cannot see us being any better than mediocre League 1. I can't see us getting promoted next season. I don't know how we're going to do it. Put it down to Stuart Donald. At this moment in time, he's feeling the club. He's feeling the fans. He's feeling the great support. You had the world, you had the club, you had every single person eating out of your pocket at one point. And you've just thrown it all away. Thrown it all away because of greed. You saw yourself for a quick book at Sunderland Football Club making 10 million. Charlie Metfin. I was never a massive Charlie Metfin fan, but I did do a little digging into his history, into his previous businesses and what his employees did say about him. And it isn't really that good reading. So I ain't going to go into any of that. But it's online to be found and to be read. So really, 
Stuart Donald, you need somebody else there to really help you out. And what happened? What happened to Juan Santori, the great South American hope? Bringing all these Uruguayan players in, doing a really good job. Nowhere to be seen apart from day one. Diddly squat money into the club. What is the point? What is the point? What is the purpose of Juan Santori? We wanted to see him come in, plough in the money and be absolute legend at Sunderland Association Football Club. But it's not going to happen. It hasn't happened. And I just don't see anywhere that Sunderland can go at this moment in time under Stuart Donald apart from down. And it is not looking good. I'm 50 this week and I can't see us being back in the Premier League until I'm probably at least 55, which is very depressing. Now again, I want to see Stuart Donald turn this around and succeed, but it's looking very doubtful. But So Stuart, can you prove us all wrong? Can you get yourself in up at Sunderland and turn this club around for next season, for the beginning of next season? It's going to be behind closed doors. We aren't going to be able to go to the matches, which is unfortunate. And now we move on to the playoffs for this season. The first playoff is July the 3rd. Portsmouth versus Oxford, Wickham versus Fleetwood. And I heard one or two Oxford players may have coronavirus. I do wish them all the best. I hope they make a speedy recovery. But I'm going to go that Portsmouth will be promoted to the championship this season. So I hope I haven't just put the mockers on your Portsmouth. But I do wish all four clubs all the best. I hope you all have, you know, the best possible playoffs. But I hope, I'm thinking, I'm going to go for. I do have a lot of Portsmouth fans on here who... Subscribe to the channel, who watch the channel. So I'm wishing Portsmouth all the best and I'm predicting Portsmouth will be in the championship next season. So there we go. It hasn't well, it has been all doom and gloom really, hasn't it? There's not much really going on. Apart from Ben Anik, Ben Anik could be coming to Sunderland on a free. we 33 year old Ben Anik. But if you just come to Sunderland, we will always be behind him because of what we do. We always follow the players that come. We support the players that come to Sunderland. It isn't Ben Anik's fault that... He's at the end of his career, he's on a free, and that Stuart Donald won't splash the cash for anybody else. Because we think John McLaughlin is going to be going, and we'll have probably you Burge is number one, and Ben Anik is number two. So if Ben Anik comes in, I wish you all the best, Ben. I hope you have a great twilight end to your career. Well, thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel, and sometimes I do waffle on a little bit. Cheers, stay safe. Oh. And if it's possible, always look on the bright side of life. And no sooner as I'd just finished making this video, it was announced that Josh Scowen has signed a one-year contract and staying at the stadium light, which I'm really happy about. Josh Scowen could be a good player next season. Now, out of contract this season, McLaughlin. John McLaughlin, we need to get in contract. We need to re-sign him. Chris Maguire, we need to keep Chris Maguire. Joel Lynch, I'd be happy if Joel Lynch stayed. Tom Flanagan, I'm easy either way. Duncan Watmore again, easy either way. Baldwin, time for Baldwin to go. Oz Turk, I want Oz Turk to stay and sign a new contract. Ethan Robson, I want Ethan Robson to stay and sign a new contract. And Kimpy Yorker, the jury's out. So they're the players that are up for contracts in the summer. They're the ones I want to stay. Some I'm not bothered about and some I'm 50-50. Now, is this time now? Time to start to rebuild Sunderland's squad. Bring in one or two assets. Like the Marcus Madisons. Donald, like I said before, it's never too late to win the fans back. But are you, have you got the balls? Are you man enough? And most of all, do you want to? Because either way, I'm happy. If you give it a real good go, I'm happy. If you sell a club to somebody who has money to put into the club, who loves the club, who wants the club to succeed, and I'm really happy. Right again, thanks for watching the video. Sorry for the add-ons at the end of the video, but, you know, life goes on and news pops in all of the time. Right, thanks for watching. We'll see you later.